Yama everyone. Yama means hello in Wiradjuri language, the language of my nation and people. My name is Nicole and I'm a First Nations woman and a member of the Mabel Community Engagement Team. I am honoured to have been asked to lead the gathering of Queensland's independent support providers through our acknowledgement of country, giving respectful reflection and thanks to the oldest living culture in the world, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. This time of acknowledgement is an important moment to reflect on cultural and individual diversity here in Australia and embrace and encourage inclusivity, respect and a sense of belonging for all people. A sentiment that is reflected daily by Mabel through the vision, mission and work you all do. We acknowledge all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the traditional custodians of the lands, waterways and skies across Australia. From Mulgana country in the west to Bundjalung country in the east, from Lutruwita country in the south to the Saibay Islands in the Torres Strait. This continent is home to hundreds of different nations whose knowledge has helped shape and evolve our understanding of the land, waterways and seas. We pay our respects to the Elders past, present and emerging and recognise the contribution of all First Nations peoples to the lands that we live, learn and play on. Mandangubu, thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for the acknowledgement to country and welcome everyone. My name's Peter Scott. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of Mabel. Given May is Small Business Month in Queensland, we wanted to recognise this by sharing with you information that may help you as an independent support worker on the Mabel platform. At Mabel, we're big supporters of small business. I'm excited to share our Small Business Market Insights report with you, which is available to download via our website. The Small Business Market Insights report outlines how you, as independent support workers, are pioneering opportunities for small businesses and sole traders in the care and support sector. It may surprise you to know that small business, including sole traders, account for 98% of all Australian businesses, but only represent 27% of the healthcare and social assistance sector, and this represents an opportunity. When I spent some time in Queensland earlier this month, I was excited by the opportunities for Mabel and our support worker community across the state. You may have even seen us featured on Landline for the innovative community managed approach we are taking with locals supporting locals across rural and regional areas. One way in which we can support you to capitalise on the opportunities is to share with you a Q&A session we recorded recently as part of New South Wales Small Business Month. The messages and insights from the distinguished panel are equally applicable to Queensland and in fact, right across the country. The discussion was hosted by the former Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman and Mabel board member, Kate Carnell. Thanks, Peter. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And I'd like to also welcome all of those people online as well. And, remind, and a reminder that we are recording this, so you will be able to go back to areas and have a listen to it later. You can also put in a question, of course, as Peter uh, mentioned uh, earlier. Now you've seen that I am passionate about small business, run my own small businesses over, over lots of years. Uh, but by being small business ombudsman, I really saw just how important small businesses are to our community generally. You know, there's 2.3 million businesses, small businesses in Australia, employing less than 20 employees. But I bet you didn't know that there's 1.5 million of those that are sole traders, people running their own businesses, and half a million businesses with less than five employees. Now those businesses make up 35% of our GDP, contribute $418 billion to our economy. So you can see that small businesses and the growth of small businesses matter to everyone, matter to this country. Uh, significantly and that's the reason I'm so pleased to be part of Mabel and to be able to talk to all of you today because the point of Mabel as Peter said about providing better uh, better services better support to people um, to stay in their own homes but it's also to help small business people people who want to run their own businesses like the panel we've got here today um, set up their own business, have the flexibility, the capacity to thrive in small business and potentially to grow your business as well. There's nothing to stop 
uh, people who sole proprietors on the Mabel platform from employing some other people or going into partnership with uh, family, friends and others and growing a bit of a business for the future. All of those things are possible. And on the Mabel platform, we give you support in areas um, such as invoicing, marketing, training, um, insurance, as, as Peter said earlier. And this is really important, but I'm going to give you just two other things I'd suggest you do. There is a site called business.gov.au, which is a federal government site, gives great information about setting up your own business and a whole range of other things, even where you can get free digital uh, training courses to help you with your website um, and social media, those sorts of things, which can be a bit of a mystery to, to lots of people, but really important in, um, in running your, your own business. Uh, can I also suggest that you download the ATO app? So just go to your app store, look at ATO, download the app. It gives you a lot of really valuable capacity, even down to tracking the mileages, mileage on your car, um, invoices, you can take a photo of them, they go into your, uh, into your tax uh, return, all sorts of really easy and cool stuff and all absolutely free. My story's a bit like Peter's really with regard to my parents. My parents were small business people, but really well organised. They'd uh, organised how they were going to age at home. They'd built a, a great um, granny flat or um, out the back of the family home. It was uh, disability friendly, it was age friendly. Everything was great, except when mum became uh, less well, less able to, uh, to move around and dad was caring for, the, for her, they needed help in the home. Now that was okay, except they ended up with someone different every day or every couple of days. Um, mum didn't like having somebody different in the home every day. She refused to have those people in, in her home. Uh, Dad couldn't look after her, mum fell, broke a hip and they ended up in a residential aged care facility that they didn't want to be in. That was um, really tragic for all of us. Um, uh, so, you know, we've got to um, make sure as many people can live in their own homes for as long as they, they can without those issues. Now, I've got three really impressive women here with me, with me today. So you won't have to listen to me much more. We'll be listening uh, to them. But um, as well as them being really impressive, you heard from Peter before that we have a really diverse group of people who are operating on the Mabel platform. In fact, 26% are men and only 11% in the sector more, more generally are men. So it's great that we're encouraging uh, males to become part of this. Uh, I think 50% are new to the sector, so didn't work um, in the sector prior to coming on the Mabel platform. And that's fantastic, because we all know that there is a huge lack of people who are working in this sector. And so that helps as well. 48% speak um, a language um, other than English. And Peter said before that we've even got 82 year olds working on the, on the platform, which is great. So, my fantastic panel. Starting at this end, we've got Suzanne DiGiorgio. She's a community home care nurse who's been on the platform since January 2018. Suzanne loves her work and has been able to make a difference in the lives of clients that she works with. She finds the work at Mabel incredibly rewarding and gets a great sense of achievement in what she does. And I've been talking to Suzanne and you can just see that. Well, as she said, her clients ask her to marry her all the time and she <laughs> hasn't said yes yet, but there you go. Um, and we've got Jo Calabria. Um, she's been on the Mabel platform since 2015. You're one of the old timers, mm -hmm. uh, very definitely. Offering services to aged care, um, uh, clients, um, but also focusing on dementia care. Jo offers quality care as by being reliable, responsible, um, and ensuring her clients can feel comfortable and supported in their own homes. During her time with Mabel, Jo has been able to work with a variety of different clients, both short and long term, and has changed her hours uh, when her personal situation has changed, which mm -hmm. is a really important part of what you can do on the Mabel, Mabel platform. 
the end, we've got uh, Tammy Hagar. Uh, she's an assistant in nursing um, who joined Mabel in 2018. Tammy uh, has experience in working in hospitals and community care. Uh, Tammy enjoys working with a variety of clients from different cultural backgrounds and learning about people's different interests and beliefs um, to help provide a tailored service based upon dignity and respect for clients' values. Uh, you have to admit, great people. Uh, now, over to the questions. The first question is how did you make the transition from working for a traditional provider to Mabel? Now, I told Tammy I was going to go to her first, but she said I couldn't, so I've now got it, got it goes to Suzanne first, um, and I'll, I'll go down the, down the, the panel. So, Suzanne. Um, I become a nurse later in my career, um, and I work for a, quite a few agencies up until I um, come to work for Mabel, and I found, um, number one, that the pay was atrocious, absolutely atrocious and the reliability of the um, service people within that agency getting back to the field staff if a client went to hospital if a client went out and visited a family member they didn't ever let me know so you know by the time I get to the client I'm knocking on the door no one's there I ring the office and they go oh Suzanne I'm so sorry they went to hospital yesterday and that didn't happen to me once, it happened to me several times and I, once I saw um, what the Mabel platform could provide me um, by seeing uh, Peter on a panel on TV and he um, just, just did a brief description on what Mabel does, I thought that's the company for me where I can pick my clients, my time, my area, and yeah, and that's how I transitioned to Mabel. To being a small business owner. Yes. Uh, jo? I came from an agency as yes. well, um, and um, I was there for a very short term period. Um, it turned into private care, and it was that particular client that I worked with in private care who suggested Mabel. She said, had this been available for my mum, I would have definitely have used it. How about you try it, Joe? You'll think you'd be great for it. And, and that's, it just went from there. I started part-time on Mabel and it grew into something full-time. That's fantastic. Yeah. I wish my, I'd known about Mabel with my parents too. Yeah. Tammy? I came from traditional care, community and clinical and hospital. And I actually found out Mabel through a girlfriend who was a registered nurse at the time and she worked with Mabel and um, she was sort of skiting how wonderful this platform was and the hours that she could um, get to suit her lifestyle and so curiosity crept in and I researched Mabel and I loved what they were offering. Um, I loved their core values especially. Um, I loved the fact that you could like um, the others have said you could choose your clients to have more of a personal care, etc., for your hours, what have you. And so that's how I found out about it and I've loved it. Well, we've got a, a number of people who are new to the platform on, online today. What tips would, would you have for someone just starting out on, on Mabel? Um, Tammy, I'm going to go first to you this time. Come on. What tips would I have? Um, that you're definitely not alone. You are definitely not alone. There's a, a broader community of us out there that, there that if you have questions or concern, there's always someone from Mabel that you can talk to um, via a phone call. Perhaps um, if you know someone in your community who is already working for Mabel, you can buy conversations or what have you. So. I would recommend that, that you're definitely not alone. There's plenty um, that you can do online to research about Mabel of community carers out there who are already in the field. Um, yeah, there's, don't be overwhelmed. Don't, definitely don't be overwhelmed of, say, stepping out of a structure where it's been formal 
um, into going out as a sole trader and working for yourself. Um, yeah. So you're in charge of your, your own destiny. I, I think it's just a matter of step, uh, for whoever you are, being able to step out, be brave, know that you are definitely got value and something to offer somebody out there in the community who needs you, who needs the services that you provide um, and know that you'll be greatly appreciated because when you've come from a formal structure you don't have that sense of value like you do when you're working in the community for yourself and you can when you're building the um, morale and that relationship with the individual that you're providing that service to, you can actually start to see the impact and difference that you're making straight away. So don't be overwhelmed, step out and just do it. Jo, what, what do you think? I was going to say trust the system, trust the process, um, believe in yourself, hang in there. Um, because um, it's, it does work, mm -hmm. it does work. So you've got to believe that you can do it um, and just hang in there. So would you put, um, just apply for one job or would you, what would you do? To well, get it depends a... when you're available. So yeah. um, maybe clear an afternoon, a couple times a week, start from there um, and pick up hours in those and then you'll quickly see that, you know, picking up more hours um, is going to be in demand and you'll have to make yourself more available. Suzanne? Um, I, when I first um, started to work for the community, I, I'm very organised and I got all my ducks in a line, so I knew I needed a police record check, made sure that was up to date. With my um, working with children check, make sure that was up to date. My first aid certificate, made sure that was up to date. And then um, I already had a bit of a nursing background. I actually won a scholarship to do nursing. And, um, but I thought I'll just go and do a few uh, short courses. So I did a few short courses. And then I knew that I was quite comfortable and confident enough to um, approach Ma Mabel and um, set myself up to become a sole trader and um, put myself in the community. That's true, because starting your own business can be a bit of a journey, can't it, really, if you've never never done it before. Um, was there anything surprising that happened in setting up your, 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 your small business? You said you're very well organised and you'd done your research, but anything that people should know about? Um, just, um, I mean, if, if you've got a passion for um, caring and a passion for looking after um, people that need help at home. It's something, if you want it bad enough and if you want to do this type of work, I come from a, a sales industry before nursing, but I knew my passion was caring. And I knew that um, for me to um, follow my passion, I needed to be patient and follow the steps that I needed and before I knew it, within two months, I had everything that I needed. And that's when I then called Mabel. And um, yeah, they just took all my credentials, um, all my certificates. Um, of course, I did a bit more study. Um, and yeah, I was ready to go. I was quite chuffed with myself because you know something when something looks really daunting, if you break it up into little pieces and just do one thing at a time, today I'm going to go and look at how I can get a police record check. Today I'm just one step at a time and before you know it you're ready to go. So Jo, how do you manage tax, super, leave, your accounting, the accounting side of the business? Um, uh, well just with any individual return that you might do, you just accumulate uh, receipts um, and just pull them out at tax time. Have a good accountant um, who knows about small business obviously and can give you advice. Um, good point you've made because yeah. certainly before anyone sets up a small business it's a good idea to talk to your trusted advisor whether that's your accountant or a bookkeeper or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, important not to just you know run into it without doing that. Um, Tammy, 
setting up the business, how did that go for you? Um, it was a new experience, a learning experience definitely, but um, in regards to what you're saying before, getting yourself a good accountant is really important if you're like me and don't have the time and you're not too sure about those things. Um, setting up the business is not as daunting as um, what your mind may feel it to be. It's just a matter of being able to put your ducks all in a row, I suppose, do research, talk about it, um, even ring people on the platform, Mabel, and be able to discuss those things with them and then just step out and do it. Yeah. Because the number one question we get is how you set your hourly rates. So tell me, how did you do that? And I'll ask so everyone. How to... What I did, because I came from agency and you're basically told this is what you're going to be um, getting for your hourly rate. What I did was I researched on Mabel, actually, and I had a look at other serv carers um, servicing the areas of similar needs that I wanted to get to and looked at the rate they were charging from Monday to Friday and obviously the weekend um, and overnight rates as well. So, And then I was able to work out a rate from that as to what is fair for the Because it's also important, isn't it, to take into account the costs of doing business. Mm. You know, things like your super and your leave and your, your, the cost of petrol, which is becoming more of an issue um, these days. So it's important to set your hourly rate knowing what your costs are, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, jo, um, for um, you, um, how did you set your hourly rates? Um, it's changed for me throughout my process with um, Mabel. Um, obviously, the rates are not comparable to um, an award rate. So um, you just have to look at what everyone else is charging online and see what their experiences are. Um, I've also had clients offer to pay me slightly more than my rate, which right. was an indicator that my rates were too low. Um, well, so they really valued you. Oh, as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, you, you've just got to gauge the market. <laughs> One of the most difficult things is putting up your rates, isn't it? So how do you have I that have, discussion? Yeah. What, sorry, what was that? Putting, putting up, up, your up your rates. rates. Because, if, look, if we just think right now, petrol prices have gone through the roof. Mm. That's a cost of doing business mm. for you guys. So how do you have that discussion? Anybody got any... I, have, I, I, I think haven't. That, I haven't. You haven't. I think you've got the, to have beauty it. Of, <laughs> the beauty of that is... Um, when, if you've got that um, working relationship with your client, and, and most of us do, um, that's something you can discuss with the client because if you're talking about an increase in that hourly rate, you've also got to remember it affects the client yeah. as well. So um, setting that hourly rate in motion when you first take on that client and contract, those are things that you have to think about as well. Whether it's fair to set just one rate because you know that you're going to have them over a course of a long period of time that's viable for them. Or if you're going to have them like as a high care that's only going to be for a short service of time, then perhaps that's when you need to be able to think about that hourly rate at a different level. Okay. Another thing I just want to say, I've yeah. just done a live-in um, role where I lived in the household for a week with um, a family member. Um, the wife and the daughter wanted to go away on a holiday and they hired me to live in with that family. Um, instead of charging them an hourly rate for the whole time that I'm there, we agreed on a one set rate. Yep. So, yeah, it was just one bulk um, amount. Mm. And we agreed that, you know, that that was affordable for them and that, that it was feasible for me to be home with that family member for um, the, the seven days that I was there. So, being a sole trader, that's the flexibility yes, of your job. You couldn't do that if you were working no, for an agency. No, that's right. That's true. Um, marketing, how do you market yourself? Um, jo, you've got some views on profile photos and so on. Mm. 
The profile picture is extremely important. Um, being an online profile, it's probably the one thing that clients are looking at first and making judgment on. Um, sometimes if it's not the right photo, um, they won't continue to read your profile. So the profile picture has to look professional. Um, you have to have a smile. Um, you have to look engaging um, and, you know, easy going. Um, yeah, obviously if you're not going to smile, it's not going to look like you're easy going. So, um, yeah, I can't stress how important the profile picture is. <laughs> what about bios? Um, Tammy? Wording's important because the way that you communicate about yourself to whoever's looking at your file, um, you can think of it as communicating it one way, but the actual person reading your profile could think of it another. So I think um, wording is very important. It's always good to perhaps have someone else who maybe is a little bit more experienced than that if you've got uncertainty. Giving as much information and obviously the truth about yourself um, is very, very important because as well as the photo, what people are reading about you is either going to be welcoming for them or and um, enabling them to know, yes, that's exactly what I like, that's exactly the personality I, I would like. And so it's really clear communication and wording is very important. So Suzanne, is it important to ensure that what you've got on your, in your bio shows when you're available, what you do, what you don't do? How, how honest do you have to be in a bio? Well, my policy is the policy of honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Um, if you're not truthful, sooner or later you'll get caught out and you will lose respect with that family. My bio is um, very honest and um, saying that, you know, I never had grandparents in my life and um, because they were abroad, of course, and by the time I could afford to go see them, they had passed on. So my passion was to look after the elderly and I just found them that their life stories and their histories, and I, I wrote that in my bio saying that, you know, working with the elderly is n just not a job for me, it's, it's, it's a delight. And I show my passion in my a bio. Um, and with my photo, of course, like Joe said, um, you can't wear, which I love my holy jeans with all my holes in them, um, you can't you have to look professional, you know. Um, if you like dogs, maybe hold your dog, you know. Something, that, something that's personable to them. You know, that's a really interesting comment you make because um, pet friendly um, is one of the most frequently searched characteristics on the, on the website. So lots of people, lots of people have animals and they want to uh, yeah, show them. Show them Definitely. or have people who also yeah. like animals. Uh, animals as well. I, w I was surprised by that, but isn't that Yeah, it's lovely. That I mean, I don't have an animal because where I live I can't have animals, but it's lovely that, you, you know, a lot of my clients have pets, they're company pets, mm. um, and for them to see a pet on your profile, if you, you only get one picture, of course, yes. so, you know, Sell yourself. You're selling yourself. So if you, you know, by looking respectful, as Joe said, and professional, and you know, if you love your pet and you've got a gorgeous-looking pet, show him off. Now, Suzanne, how do you select clients um, that you really want to work with? I understand that uh, that you've got a screening process, and you might like to elaborate on that. Yes. And I'll, then I'll ask others for comments on it. My screening process is that um, our as a sole trader, our um, roles or jobs or clients come through either an email to me, my personal email, or you can look on the Mabel platform and it has um, a tab where it says jobs. And that is new jobs that are coming into the system for the um, staff that want to um, take on more clients can go to that um, tab on the Mabel platform 
and look at what the job entails. Um, as I become older, I found I couldn't do um, some clients because they were just too heavy for me. Um, my passion is the elderly, so I screen my clients now by um, their, their need and who the clientele are. My area, I like to work within my area because you've got to remember if you're travelling from let's say A, B and C, your three clients, if you're travelling from A to C and there's an hour travel, um, you have to work out your, um, your graphics on, on you know, where your directions or where you're going. So you're not spending most of your time for an hour job spending an hour travelling. So you have to be uh, quite um, organised in picking the clients that you want to work f for in your area. Um, their needs um, and then uh, their risk assessment. Um, are they, um, if, if it's a disabled, um, a, an aged care person that I'm looking at, are they incontinent? Are they mobile? Are they um, um, aggressive? Because with dementia, you'll get aggressive behaviours. Um, what health issues do they have? You know, I've got a client at the moment who um, has some high care needs. Are you experienced enough and are you confident enough to look after those high care needs? Um, and. Uh, do they live alone? Um, that's important as well because sometimes you end up in a, in a family household um, and they've hired you to um, look after their loved ones but slowly but surely you end up looking after the whole family by doing the dishes for the whole family, doing the washing for the whole family. So you need to work out if that's going to happen, if you're going to go into a household and there's a, a, a whole family living there, you need to know your boundaries and you need to know um, when to politely say to the family, look, I'm employed to look after the client. I'm sorry, but I'm not here to look after the whole family. And, and they will take advantage of that. So once you've decided the client, you will um, then um, call them. They will um, either send, you send them a message. We have a, a, plat a, a message platform where you would send the client a message saying, I say something like, hi, my name is Suzanne. Um, I've just seen your ad on the Mabel platform and I would like to make contact with you and discuss this role further. You can either give him your um, mobile number if you like or if you don't want to give out any personal details first up, use the Mabel platform. It gives you the platform to message your client and to discuss their needs on the platform. And then I go from there. There's more to that. Then there's a meet and greet, um, um, discussing the fees. But that's what, where I start. Okay. Jo, we were talking earlier mm -hmm. about what happens when you've got a client who um, you're three days into the role and mm -hmm. it's just not working mm -hmm. uh, or you're really worried. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Communicating is key. Um, so bring it up early, talk to the client or the client's family if they're not able to communicate. Um, bring up the issue as soon as possible before <coughs> Excuse me. It either affects you or the client. Yeah. So you know, early early intervention is That's the right. is the story. Yep. You really need to make sure that parameters are set. Tammy, do you want to talk about that? Boundaries are very important uh, for the protection of yourself. So as we we're speaking, so that if a behaviour or an issue occurs, it doesn't escalate. So I think it's you need to be very firm about the services that you're providing. For example, you're not there to look after the whole family, you're there to look after the client that you're, um, you're there to look after. So I think it's good if you have those boundaries that your communication is very clear. For example, I'm a very um, 
bubbly personality and I just, I, I love to chat, I love to be social, I love to help wherever I can. And I found when I first started out with a particular client, I did things because I wanted to, but then it was expected of me. And then if I didn't do them, then um, the family was questioning why. So I think the boundaries are very important as to what, the, what, what you do, yeah. So, Tammy, have you taken an opportunity to invest in training or acquiring new skills? Um, I have. Um, that's what I love about the platform. There's always um, levels of different um, training that you can do, but you don't have to do it just with Mabel. You can do it with other uh, avenues as well. So, yeah, so it's very good like that. Because there is a lot of training available on the, on the hub. There is definitely a lot, of, well. a, a lot of training and... Um, which I think is good. So you can, so you'll, that's what I was saying before, you, you're not alone. So you can up your skill level all the time. You can learn and educate yourself a lot more about um, areas that you may feel that you lack in or that you're uncertain. Um, it's really an, um, important for me to get across that you're not alone, like the education is there. Um, and the beauty of that about the learning hubs is we all have different learning ability. Some people who may be looking at this and, and they may not, uh, English may be their sec second la language and there's a lot of people out there where it is their second language. The learning hub is very, very good like that because it's something that you can do as a process and get the extra help from people as well, interpreters or what have you, to help you with that particular learning course. So yeah, it's very good like that to keep current. A lot of it's current, it's updated, and it's events and things that are happening now, which are really good. That would have been particularly important during COVID, I, I imagine, for staying up to, 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 to speed on what was actually happening in that space. Suzanne, do you, have you used the hub? No. <laughs> yes. You. No, I haven't actually. Um, I do have a mother who is in care in a okay. nursing home um, and that nursing home has a lot of um, seminars for families on dementia. So I take advantage of um, th those facilities right. and what they offer um, whatever dementia training or anything on dementia, I'm mainly um, dementia focused with my um, work now, because um, I specifically work with aged care now. Um, and yeah, because my clients um, with aged care, like it's dementia or their um, ability or um, their behaviours. I've done a lot when I did study, yeah. um, I did my Cert 4 in aged care, yeah. so I did a lot of study um, back then. Um, but in the last two years, no, I have not. Um, jo, you, fo you focus on dementia. I yeah. do, yes. So, and that's an area that is, that is changing, isn't it? In, in terms of you know, treatments, other approaches. How do you stay up to speed on that? Um, I have a lot of experience with different types of dementias um, and I see a lot of similarities um, and I guess I can be quick to spot out um, what's coming to the client. Um, but in terms of keeping myself up to date, um, yeah, being um, a busy mum, I don't really have a lot of time. but. Um, I do try to educate myself where I can. Um, but but it, you know, there's a limit to the to the hours in the day. And, yeah. And we all we all know that, and that there certainly wouldn't be expectations. That, yeah. But that definitely, if there's something that comes up that's not within my scope of knowledge, I'm definitely out there looking for information on that, just so um, I can help whatever client I'm helping out. That sort of runs into my next question, which I'll which yep. I'll throw to you, Joe. What do you need to be mindful of? Because you are working independently, not yep. in, a, in a big organisation. What, what are the tips you can share about 
you know, operating, working um, independently? Um, I, I think don't offer support um, if you're not qualified to is a big one. I've seen yeah. it time and time again. Um, you're not covered for it and mm -hmm. so don't do it. Um, and um, it's, and, and you, you said before that you, from the platform itself you can get, um, you can get support as well if you've if you're being asked to do things you can't do or you're just not sure about. That's right, that's right. And but there is a community. Yeah, and it's also about communicating with families because families will, like like you were saying earlier about families will take advantage, it happens all the time. And if you're working for yourself, be aware of it and make sure you're communicating um, and, and letting the clients know, it, know it's not okay um, is key. That's absolutely true. Do you have a, a support um, a debriefing system if you've got, you know... Uh, I work in teams of okay. um, people on Mabel, so okay. I will, that would be my first avenue, um, obviously, to talk to my team. Um, and I guess my second would be, I'd be on the phone to Mabel asking whether they've got um, connections that they can get me in contact with. How about you, Tammy? Same, same thing for me. So I work within a team as well um, that, that's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week roster that we have. So the um, team that I work with, we've been together for three years now. Right. So um, we have this really good working relationship with each other and whenever we need to discuss, we have a coordinator as well that we can talk to her about, which she's like the, the daughter. So, um, and it's it's worked out really well like that so yeah but if I ever needed to feel like I needed to discuss um, an issue or something that I'm having problems with I would I would talk to another co-worker or even someone in Mabel or what have you yeah. So question to all of you do you think there's misconceptions about working in this in this sector both in disability um, and in aged care? I do. I believe that a lot of people think that what we do is just looking after palliative or uh, patients with dementia, yeah. but actually it's more of a broader scale than that. When you go on the Mabel platform, you actually have got um, services that perhaps weren't asking for that particular help at one point of time, like for instance a lot more children, yeah. babies, yeah. Um, companionship. Um, not not just for the for the elderly, but for younger. Um, so the the care needs across the community are absolutely broad. So looking at Mabel, just don't think it's for this type of service for the aged or this type of service for disability. It's actually more than that because it's about quality of life. Isn't it, it is it? It rather is. than care, as as I think Peter said. In, in his speech. So does that mean from time to time you have to um, help people understand what they might want or like? Do you have to be a bit inventive sometimes to, because to, sometimes I suppose people don't know exactly what would work so for them. I, I find for me, I, I don't just work with aged, I work with younger ones and teenagers as well. And so this is where communication is really good with the family and with the client to be able to work out a care plan that, um, that works out for everyone but specifically for the client because being able to do that, being able to provide that specific personal care service for them in their home is such a huge, um, a huge difference opposed to what they would get in traditional care and that's the beauty about being um, working for yourself via the platform and so it's looking at your client and the needs that they have and being able to yes make those suggestions um, so I'm very artistically and musically wired so I found being able to do the things that I love to love to do and introduce those things to my clients and has led to be able to take the clients out to go to theatre and things like that. It has been an awesome journey to be able to give that service that you know that they wouldn't get otherwise. I think that's probably been, after the discussions I've had with all three of you beforehand, I think you're all um, in, in that boat. So what benefits do you see as being part of the Mabel community? 
start with you. For me, um, I'm a grandmother now <laughs> and I can uh, work up until um, two o'clock, one o'clock some days. Like yesterday, my, grand my daughter called me and my grandson was sick. I was able to go and collect him and look after him for the two hours while his mother um, kept working. She was a t she's a teacher as well. So when she finished school, she could collect him. And having that flexibility with our time and picking the clients that we want to work for and um, the areas. And I live luckily near the water and I take every opportunity to get out there on my kayak on the lake, you I know. I kayak too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so it's great. It's great because you get the freedom to, to, to work and do something that you love, but you get the freedom to enjoy your life as so well. Your quality of life matters too. As well yes, as of clients. course. Jo. I was going to say flexibility in hours as well. I've just recently come off um, doing 12 hour days. Um, to um, having to cut that short now in order to pick up my little one from school. So she's just started school and I need to be with her in the afternoon. So um, I've worked around that by starting really early in the morning and I finish at two now. So um, yeah, it's just been great that I can still work the hours that I need and still do um, family time. That's great. Tammy, what flexibility? Look? Yeah, I agree. 100% and lifestyle, definitely. Yeah. Being able to work your um, hours around your own core needs, your family needs, or perhaps if you, like me, my children are all grown and older, but I have my grandkids as well, and also my mum. So I'm able to work out those needs around my family needs as well. Yeah. Because it also means that you've got access to um, a whole range of potential clients, doesn't it? From Absolutely. The, and you can do all the things and they're, you... And they've got the most amazing experiences, you know, like their lives, you know, like I've got a, a war veteran from World War Two that I'm wow. still working with, you know, and I worked for a man that wrote the Play School song. Oh, um, really? Yes, I, I did. And <laughs> his, fam his wife was uh, David Attenborough, is it? Yeah. His secretary. Wow. So, yeah, That's I've awesome. met some amazing people, um, professional people. And how exciting is that? To be true. able to listen to their stories. They have so much to tell you. And, you know, I love to hear them. And, yeah, so... OK, because I've got to go to the last question now. I'm going to ask all th three of you. Mm -hmm. um, have you only got, got any last tips or words of advice from someone who's listening today um, about starting up on the mobile platform? Is it something they should do? I, my tip is um, when you look on the job tab about the jobs that are available out there for the, um, the girls and the staff, don't pick one job and sit there and wait for an answer um, hoping that you'll get that one job. Um, I, I don't put all my eggs in the one basket. I apply for maybe three to four jobs and um, often two of them don't even answer me uh, for reasons maybe they've picked someone else or I wasn't suitable um, looking at my profile, but um, having picked, um, applied for other two or three jobs, they come in and go, yep, Suzanne, that you're exactly what we want. Can we, um, you know, give you a call? So I call them on the phone and then I have a meet and greet. So my advice is don't just pick one uh, job on the platform. Put out a few feelers and see, you know, they may not all be right for you or your time slot's not right for that client. So, um, yeah, my advice is... Okay. Jo? Uh, my advice is um, give it a go. Um, if you're hesitating, don't. Um, just give it a go. Absolutely. Yeah. Tammy? Do it. You won't regret it. I mean, I did, and I love it. Um, I wish Mabel was around sooner. I would have saved me the heartache of going through traditional aged care and not feeling valued. Um, so just do it. Believe in yourself. Well, can I say, having met you, th three of you, t today, um, I think the people that, uh, that you uh, look after that are in your lives are very, are very, very lucky. And I think the message to everybody out there is you actually can make a difference. Yes. 
Back to Peter. Some great insights from the panel there. And for those of you who are new to the platform, I hope this answered some of your key questions. Look out for more content to be rolled out over the next year that will help you, our support worker community, to get the most out of the Mabel platform.